By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in today's old school magic battle, I am taking on my brother, Yoop, who is playing with a blue, black and red deck. I guess I'm just going to call it a mid-range deck. It's packed with power. You can actually see it on the screen right now. And I am playing with my Orbitron deck, which is red and white. Now, before I go into the deck tech, like always, you can check the description below. There you will find a timestamp. One of those timestamps will say MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to game number one. Here we are going to start with the deck techs. And I'm going to start with my deck, Orbitron. And here we see the deck that I'm playing with today. It is one of my favorite decks, one of the first decks that I started uh, building when I got back into old school and playing at old school tournaments and such. Uh, this is Orbitron. Um, it's just, when I look at it, it's, it makes me really happy. Uh, it's based on my Antiquities collection and it's built around the Tron combination. Now for the people that don't know, it refers to the three Tron lands. Urza's Tower, Urza's Power Plant, and Urza's Mine. Now, these are uh, lands that you can just cast as any normal land, and you can tap them, and you get one mana back, a colorless mana. So, that's not very exciting, right? But this is the, this is the sweet thing. When you've got all three of them on the board, so you've got a tower, a power plant, and a mine, something happens with these lands. All of a sudden, the power plant taps for two instead of one, the mine taps for two instead of one, and the tower even gives you three colorless mana at your expense so that makes it super powerful so what i'm hoping to do is this deck has multiple strategy strategies it has an early game a mid game and a late game now the early game i want to play off my cheap artifact so obviously that's my soul ring my moxen hey they're zero um, but also my relic barriers i'm playing with three of them my three winter orbs and my three uh, howling mines so i've got this parfait strategy so for the people that don't know what that is parfait uh, strategy is when you tap the Winter Orb and you tap the Howling Mine. Those are the only two artifacts in old school that you can deactivate by tapping them. So it's quite a unique ability. Now Winter Orb, when you play it, it says you can only untap one land during your untap step. So that means that my opponent can only untap one land. But then when I use my Relic Barrier to tap my Winter Orb down at the end of my opponent's turn or after my opponent's untap step, then I can untap all my lands. Why? The Winter Orb is tapped and so it does not work. The same thing goes for the Howling Mine, but of course I have to tap the Howling Mine at a different stage in the game. The Howling Mine, I want the Howling Mine to work for me, so I'm going to draw two cards with my Howling Mine. After my draw step, I'm going to tap it down with the Relic Barrier so that it doesn't work for my opponent. That way I get to draw a lot of cards, hopefully draw into a Tron combination. And once I have Tron, I can start playing out my uh, Triskelions, hopefully early in the game. Usually there's six for four four, which is pretty steep. But with my Tron power, I can probably get them out at turn number four, maybe sometimes even at turn number three. So that's what I'm hoping for. And then we also have Icy Manipulator. Now Icy Manipulator is a killer control card in this deck because of the Winter Orb. Remember, Winter Orb says that you can only untap one land. And then I can tap that land with my Icy Manipulator even before he gets into his main phase, I'll do it during his upkeep. So this is going to be extremely hard for my opponent to kind of play under once I have that prison going. And then I can just wait until I draw into my Disintegrate or Fireball and just play a huge, huge X damage spell with those two cards using my Tron Lance. Now, if I don't draw into them, no worries, because I'm also playing with a full playset of Switchies and of course that full playset of Triskelions that I mentioned earlier here in the deck deck. So that's pretty powerful. And I also have some control because I kind of felt like when I was playing it, it was or, or I had Tron or it was Bust. And the thing with the Parfait combination, it may sound very strong, but opponents usually have a lot of artifact removal. So in a lot of situations, you will have your opponent drawing two cards just like me because uh, the opponent took care of the relic barrier. So to make sure that I can kind of live long enough to get Tron and to play a huge X spell or to do other you know crazy stuff, I've decided to add white to this combination. White is really there for the control element. So I've got four swords to Plausius, four disenchants, and I've got a balance. So that's pretty standard white stuff, right? But my favorite white card in the deck by far, actually my favorite card in the deck is the Argivian Archaeologist. What a cool card. I've got only a one-off, 
So I kind of know with this card, if I play it early game, my opponent is going to remove it. But what it can also do is I can choose to just keep it in my hand or hopefully draw it late game and then play it all the way at the end of the game when my graveyard is nicely fully stocked with useful artifacts. And I can, for example, get my Chaos Orb back and just start flipping like crazy and win the game that way. So there, there are multi, I, at least I feel there are multiple layers to this deck and that's kind of how I build it. There's not one uh, strategy uh, I want to make, make sure that I have enough pressure on the board so that my opponent is really focused on what's happening on the board and is not thinking, hey, wait a minute, he's playing red with Tron, so I need to get, you know, I need to keep something in my hand to deal with maybe a possible fireball. No, I want him to really feel the pressure with playing the game without fireball and disintegrate. And then if I need it in the end game, I can use it to win it, but I can also use win without those two burn cards. Does that make sense? Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments below. This deck has been on the channel for a couple of times, so I'm sure um, regular viewers have seen this deck before. Okay, so this is Orbitron. Now let's look at the deck of Yoop. And here we see the deck of Yoop, my brother, the person I'm playing against today. And um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, when you look at it, I see the really cool Juzam Jin, and I also see two Guardian Beasts. And interesting here, of course, is that he's only playing with one Juzam. And look at the Demonic Hordes at the left top corner. How cool is that? Uh, for the people that don't know, it's three black and three to cast for Summon um, Demon. It's a 5-5, five five, and you can tap it to destroy target, enchant, uh, target land. So just you can tap it, it destroys target land. Now the thing here is the catch is you've got to pay three black during your upkeep. If you can, it actually taps and it destroys one of your lands. So that's pretty brutal. So you got to make sure that you can pay the cost for these demonic hordes. Or they get, you know, they go create mayhem in your own mana pool. Uh, very cool card. You don't see it often. I'm actually brewing with it at the moment with a deck with a Dingazak. But okay, that's a whole different story. Let's uh, let's continue looking at this deck. We see, of course, some of the usual suspects here. When I'm looking at the creatures in the middle, we see four Setch Trolls. One red and two to cast for a 2-2, two -two, which gets plus one, plus one when you control a swamp and you can also regenerate it. So pretty powerful creature. Basically, it's a 3-3 three, three for three, right? Because my opponent is playing with black and also he's playing with four hypnotic specters. Now, ah, oh, those creatures are such a pain. If, if you don't have anything against them, and I mean, he's playing with the mox, he's playing with the powers. So there's a pretty big chance that he can get these uh, puppies out in turn one, although he's not playing with dark rituals. And if we're looking at the left, we're seeing some pretty good instant spells there. We see two terrors, we see four lightning bolts, so that's pretty strong. Of course, the terrors is not going to be as great against me because I'm playing with artifact creatures and terror doesn't work on artifact creatures, so it's probably going to board those out after game number one. We also see four sinkholes. Now, that is pretty painful for my deck because I'm playing with Tron. This is one of the problems with Tron is everybody <laughs> plays with uh, land removal and they shoot. I mean, it's absolutely a good idea to play with some land removal in old school, especially Swedish old school, where the strip mine is restricted. Uh, but yeah, for me, it's pretty deadly having to face four sinkholes. Uh, we also see two side blasts, by the way. I, can, I think those can be really nice finishers. Then in the middle, we see a couple of artifacts that work really well with the Guardian Beasts. We see the Nevenerals Disc, of course, that works great with Guardian Beast. Uh, we see Chaos Orb that works even better. Remember, Guardian Beast said, says that all your artifacts are indestructible as long as Guardian Beast remains untapped. So that means that my opponent can flip a Chaos Orb and when K uh, a Guardian Beast is on, um, is, is on the battlefield, it doesn't destroy itself. It stays on the board. It does come back untapped, I mean, after the flip. So my opponent will have to wait a whole turn before using it again. But still, uh, that is a killer combination. And also with the Nevenerals Disc, if he blows the Nevenerals Disc up and all the other cards on the board, the artifacts actually survive when Guardian Beast is on the board. Now, Guardian Beast does die, but all the artifacts survive. So that's pretty strong. He basically gets his di disc back and he can do it again. Uh, at a later time and for, I'm sure when you're an old school player you know how incredibly difficult it can be to play against a disc you know it can be super annoying because your opponent kind of has this reset button and he can use it whenever he feels like it um, then when we look at the rest of the deck we see of course the power cards there at the bottom we see ancestral recall time walk and uh, time twister and I'm really happy to see a time twister because I think it's a great card it's, it's really a fun card also wheel of fortune there we see a few restricted cards uh, the Mind Twist, I am hopefully he's not going to play that against me. A Demonic Tutor, 
and also a fireball, I guess kind of as a finisher in this deck. It's always good to play with one fireball, I guess, when you've got access to red. Uh, for people that are wondering, by the way, what is that scribbling on the Ancestral Recall there? That's actually done by Richard Garfield himself. Um, so that is, uh, I always find that pretty cool. So he's added a line of text there to the, to the Ancestral Recall. Um, yeah, this is it. This is the deck. I think it looks really beautiful and uh, it also looks pretty strong so um let's go to the game shall we and see how this is going to turn out let's go to game one game number one i'm sitting on the left and my brother is on the right and we're doing the dice roll to see who gets to start and we're picking up our first seven let's see if we're both keeping our opening hand looks like i am keeping my first seven and we're off to the races. There's a power plant. Ooh, a Mox Pearl <laughs> Soul Ring into a Relic Barrier. What a start here. It does mean that I only have three cards left in hand. Hopefully I've got a Howling Mine in there as well. There is a start for my brother with a Mox Ruby and a Bat Lance. Tapping both. Demonic Tutor. Pretty good start of my brother as well. Is he going to look up, for example, a Mind... Time Twister, I want to say, or a Mind Twist. Or, of course, if he's got a Blue Source and Ancestral Recall, I guess that makes sense as well. Or maybe he wants to look up an Hypnotic Spectre. And, oh, it's different. It's a Black Lotus. Is he going to crack the Lotus for something? I wonder what he's going to do here. Let's see. He's got the Black Lotus. He's going to crack it, right? I mean, he looked it up. Or does he want to do something else in turn number two? Is he just setting up for next turn? Doesn't make sense because he's playing against the white. So I could then disenchant it, forcing him to use it in my turn. So I think he's going to do something with it. Looking at his hand at the moment, what will he do with his Black Lotus? That is the big question right now. I'm actually going to tap his Lotus, of course. Why not with my Relic Barrier? And it's just passing turn here. Interesting. And well, I, yeah, Disenchant. Black Lotus gone. And playing the Chaos Orb there. And in his upkeep, tapping his Mox Ruby with the Relic Barrier. Taking a damage here. There is a Sinkhole. My only land is gone. Wow, what an interesting game this is. Am I going to flip in one of his lands? Because I can use my... my Oh, wow. Mishra's Workshop into Triskelion. This is pretty good. That is sweet drawing that um, Mishra's Workshop there. And of course, I'm tapping down his Ruby in his uh, upkeep so that he cannot use it for mana. And he doesn't find the land. Just passing turn here. So I'm taking on attacking for four. It's going to drop to 15. Am I going to tap my workshop and I'm going to play more big things? I'm actually finding another Relic Barrier. I think I should use the Chaos Orb here to flip on one of his lands, to be honest. And I guess that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to flip. Let's put it on slow-mo. And here we see the flip. Ooh, that, is, it, is it a hit? I think. I think the sleeves, they just about touch. I think it's just a hit, but I'm very, very lucky here. That was a bad flip, man. That wasn't very good. Anyway, I guess it does the work. Very lucky here. City of Brass gone. Passing turn. At least uh, you can find a land here, but this is not much of a game so far. I really got full control. And those Relic Barriers are very helpful here. And to make matters worse, there is a, a Winter Orb, although that doesn't really change much about the situation. Tapping his uh, ruby again. What he really needs is mana and then he can kind of take it from there. The problem, of course, is that 4-4 four -four that just keeps hitting him. Remember, he's playing with terror, but that's not going to help him. Also, a, okay, at least this is something. There we see uh, a Setch Troll, but he doesn't have the mana to regenerate. So that means he has to block here because if he doesn't, he takes four more, goes to three, and I can finish him off. So just a lot of bad news here. There's Hypnotic Spectre, another creature that he can throw in front of the bus. And attacking here, blocking, playing a Plateau, tapping, playing a Disintegrate, and then it's pretty much over because they also have the Triskelion. 
Oh, look at his hand. Okay. Ho <laughs> ho. So I guess he was looking up the the Black Lotus at the start of the turn, or to mind twist me, or just because he wanted to play out his Juice M Jin. Um, oh man, this was pretty brutal for uh, for my opponent here. Sorry, man. Uh, sorry, Yoop. Anyway, uh, lost first game. We're gonna go to our sideboards and uh, find out what game number two has in store. Game number two, and uh, my brother, he is on the play. Let's see if he can uh, at least do something this turn, because uh, this game, I should say, because in the first game, we only saw that Demonic Tutor, and after that, it was just uh, all going downhill. At least he gets to start now. And his deck has it in itself to have some pretty powerful openings. So, I mean, is he going to be able to just have a big creature, for example, in turn one? Or, you know, a mind twist with all that power would be pretty brutal as well. Cutting the deck here, drawing our cards. And let's see. And there is an underground sea. And look at this, Mistress Workshop, Max Pearl, Suchi. <laughs> oh, what an opening again. Oh, man. Let's see why my uh, brother can do it. At least playing a sinkhole. That's, that's a pretty good. The Mistress Workshop, such a good land in my deck. And playing a Winter Orb here, at least kind of slowing uh, my opponent down here. Only able to untap one land. Finding a City of Brass as well. Tapping both here. Taking a damage. Double Bolt on the Suchi. Wow, that is a two for one, but I think it's a good decision and kind of took the speed out of my deck. So I'm finding a power plant here and I'm having a mine. If I can find an Urtsus Tower, yes! Wow, I'm top decking that one. Finding another Suchi. I wish I would always draw this well with, with, with my deck, you know, then I, then I could get into some top eights. This is crazy. Let's see what you can do here uh, playing... Chaos Orb, interesting. Is he going to flip on one of the lands or is he going to flip on the creature? Is he going to flip on a Winter Orb? He's actually going to flip on the Winter Orb, I believe. That is a really good flip. Nice hit. Winter Orb is out of the picture. And that kind of shows how annoying the Winter Orb is for my opponent. Picking that above, uh, for example, the Tron Lance. Playing a Relic Berry and a Soul Ring, so no more fuel for me. I really need a Howling Mine here to keep drawing into threats. There is... An Hypnotic Spectre, 2-2 two, two Flyer, of course I have to discard. I don't have any Flyers in my deck, by the way, so... No way to block this. Or is there going to be a Triskelion? Look at that. That means that I can kind of kill the Hippie if I want to. Not sure how many cards I have in hand yet. Still, I mean... Um, sure, my brother's asking, and I am killing the Hypnotic Spectre, so he wants to declare his attack. In response, killing the Hypnotic Spectre. I could have waited. I could have let him attack first and then before damage was dealt, kill it. But I just chose to do it this way. And tapping three here. Will we see a Satch Troll? Another Hypnotic Spectre. Ooh. That is interesting. Playing a Swords. Of course, I still have the, the white control elements in my deck. Four Swords to Plows here. It's four Disenchants. Attacking here for six. And there's a Lightning Bolt on my trike, dealing one last damage. He's going to go down to three already. Wow. Look at that. I'm on 20. I've got Tron. I've got oof, Time Walk. Okay, at least that's something. Let's see what he can do. Ancestral Recall. Hey, man, bring the blue power. That can get you back in any game. If he cannot just take care of the Suchi, I mean, he's still on three. Playing an Energy Flux. <laughs> it is a really good... Oh, Disenchant. Energy Flux is a great card against me. Obviously, that came from the sideboard, but there was just too much power coming um, from my side of the board here. Wow, winning this game number two. So that means I've won this matchup, I guess. I'm going to also play. We are, or I should say, we have also played game number three. So um, you can stick by if you want to watch that one. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's just go to game to game number three, and I can um, I can I can show you how that went. It was uh, wow. Still a little bit. It's really really nice to see your deck working the way it's supposed to. Although I guess I just had the the, the perfect draws here. Uh, it looks like we're just starting game number three here already. So no reason to wait. 
or to cut the video or anything. Let's just go and check out game number three. I guess my brother gets to start again here. And I mean, he cannot be that unlucky again, right? I just had such a good draw because he wasn't drawing bad or anything. I was just drawing marvelous. There is a Mace of If and a Mox Sapphire here. Let's see what I can do. Playing a Mishra's Workshop again in my opener, just like in game number two. Oh man, look at this. This is just insane. Tapping four here, casting Howling Mine and Relic Barrier, able to uh, tap the Howling Mine with my barrier, meaning I get to draw two. My opponent only gets to draw one. And look at the amount of mana I have. Will we see a trike? There's a trike. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, if my deck would work like this, if I would draw cards like this all the time, man, I, yeah, this deck would have been famous by now. But trust me, it hardly ever works this way. But it's really cool to see, though. Uh, attacking my brother, by the way, he's on 16. Oh, look at that, a Kismet coming in from the sideboard. And <laughs> my brother's saying, you know what, I've, I've seen enough. You take this uh, this win, man. So this is a, a unexpected, exceptional 3-0 for my Orbitron deck, um, trust me, this do this doesn't happen a lot. So you're probably tempted after seeing this to just, you know, build this deck and take it to a tournament. Um, you know, give it a try. Of course, you're you're free to do that. But I can tell you, um, I wish it would work like this, and I actually still wish it would work as well, and I would draw as well in an actual tournament online or offline preferably offline of course but there are not many offline tournaments at the moment anyway um thank you very much for watching another episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic um if you want to help me out if you want to help the channel grow you can do so by becoming a subscriber it is completely free so that's that's a small effort also you can leave a comment that really helps leave a like click the notification bell there's this little bell symbol youtube loves it when you do that and then they think my channel is really important so again that would really help thank you thank you thank you for doing that um, and another thing that you can do is you can support the channel financially by becoming a sponsor by joining timmy talks and joining me on our discord and joining our events so how does that work? You just click on the info card that's appearing right now. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can check out how you can become a patron. And you can see, okay, is this something for me or is this not something for me? Talking about the patrons, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing, wonderful patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als ik het als somba kan zien.